Good morning or afternoon, and thank you for joining the Indiana Economic Development Micro Internship Webinar for Employers. Uh, we're excited, the IDC is excited to partner with the Parker Dewey team uh, as we launch this program in Indiana. I'm Tony Denhart, Executive Vice President for Workforce and Talent for the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. The IDC is charged with growing the state's economy driving economic development and supporting businesses as they grow, launch, and locate in the state. The IDC is laser focused on adding careers, not just jobs, but high wage careers for our children and our children's children. Careers that will keep our early career talent in Indiana to build their lives and to build their prosper prosperity in fulfilling the American dream. One of the IDC workforce and talent team's focus areas in partnership with industry state agencies, PK-12, higher education, local partners, and many other workforce partners is to ensure that we have the right talent at the right time, at the right place, and with the right skills for Hoosier companies. It's as simple as supply and demand. And we're working closely, and we are working closely with our workforce experts and partners to deliver the workforce supply across all three talent pipelines, high school, university and college, and the adult population. The IDC workforce and talent team's role is focused in five strategic areas. This micro internship program will touch on two of those five areas, awareness and retention of university and college students in Indiana. We are launching this pilot program to support you by bringing awareness of Indiana companies and the amazing careers that you have to offer to university and college students in Indiana. Micro internships benefit the student, company, and university. Indiana has, great, has a great opportunity to support small, medium, and large companies in Indiana, and now is the time. We are working with Parker Dewey because they have a well-established program and a proven history that will support the goals of the program. For this pilot program, the IEDC is providing the funding to launch the pilot, uh, the pilot program within the state of Indiana. A few of our goals of this program are to, one, bring awareness of the companies and the great career opportunities to Indiana college students. Two, to retain more of those Indiana college students upon graduate, graduation. Three, support Indiana companies' early career hiring needs, and four, and to provide one more proven tool for you to leverage now as part of the pilot program and in the future as you recruit early career talent from Indiana college and universities. The entire team is looking forward to working with you as we launch this micro pilot micro internship program in Indiana. Thank you for your continued support. Jeffrey Moss, Founder and CEO of Parker Dewey will now provide an overview of the program, impact of the program, and how easy the process is to post your project to the portal. Jeffrey? Thanks so much, Tony. And, and I have to say, it's just, it's such an honor to be involved in this program, both given my huge fandom, if you will, of, of Tony and the work he's doing on behalf of the state of Indiana, and, and really what he's done his entire career on behalf of supporting employers, college students, and universities, but also as a proud graduate of Indiana University and shockingly also a member of the Dean's Advisory Council at Purdue. I am a huge fan of Indiana and recognize sort of the massive talent available across the state and, and what the state is doing to support the students, the colleges, and the employers. And I think this is really, really important. Again, Parker Dewey is a platform, and this program was designed specifically to help all three of those stakeholder groups, as Tony alluded to. So again, how this program helps Indiana's college students and recent grads is it creates these equitable opportunities to really bridge that gap, helping college students learn about the breadth of opportunities available in Indiana and launch their careers effectively, irrespective of major GPA, background, et cetera. It also helps the colleges. We did a session last week on B or, or for the colleges and universities across the state. And one of the great things it helps them do is it helps those colleges connect with employers. It helps them better support the students. It helps them do everything they can to best prepare their students and graduates 
for successful professional careers after graduation. And this program was also designed to help you as employers. It enables organizations to access, engage, and hire early career talent. And the way it does it is through these short-term paid professional projects. We call them micro-internships. It's something we pioneered almost a decade ago. And we'll talk about them in more detail as we go through. So again, this program was designed really to support companies throughout the entire recruiting process. It's designed as an effective way to access and engage candidates, a way to gain insights on candidates and assess candidates, not just based upon GPA or academic pedigree, but by real data, real experiences. It's also worth highlighting that this program was designed for every employer across the state whether it's those that have established campus recruiting programs, be it at my alma mater, Indiana, Ball State, Rose Holman, Notre Dame, this plugs right in. It helps them get the most out of what they're already doing, recruiting at those campuses. But we also recognize that there's employers that can't visit all of the 60 plus college and university campuses across the states. So for those organizations that don't have a large practice or have seen the recruiting budgets or team cut, this program helps design or drive success even with fewer resources. And the results speak for themselves. So whether companies are concerned about their cost per hire, this, uh, uh, this approach lowers the cost. We've heard anywhere from 40 to 80%. Whether companies are focused on retention. Again, we all know how much money we spend recruiting and hiring and training early career professionals and the data shows 55% leave within the first year, 55%. In contrast, our data shows those who complete micro internships, it's less than 2%. I also want to highlight that this creates equitable pathways. And when we talk about diversity, it's not just racial or ethnic or gender. We're talking about authentic diversity, creating pipelines and pathways for those individuals who decided uh, to pursue military careers before enrolling in college first-generation college students, adult learners. Again, this truly helps those companies access individuals across the pipeline. So before we jump into the specifics of the program, I want to give a quick background on micro-internships, since Tony and I have both talked about them a bit. What are these things? Well, micro-internships, the way we define them, short-term paid professional projects, that can be done on demand by highly motivated career launchers. And just to unpack that a bit, and yes, we'll share the slides and recording afterwards, so no need to take notes. Short term, meaning these are projects that would typically take someone 10 to 40 hours to complete. Again, they're not high stakes or high risk projects. They're not projects that require someone with 20 years of industry expertise or projects that require access to sensitive data. Now, while all of the individuals are NDA under NDA, you're not giving high risk bet to company projects. Think about all of those tasks you have on your plate that may not be the highest and best use of time, or those tasks that are given to a new hire to really get insights into those skills. These are paid projects. And again, through the generous support of the IEDC, they're covering the cost of the, of, of, for the companies, and we'll talk more about that in a moment, but these are paid. Now, while students appreciate the money, they're not doing it because of the money. They're doing it because they want these experiences. They want to demonstrate skills. They want to learn about your organizations. But by ensuring they're paid, it's both fair, but it also ensures that every college student has access. We're not asking students to make that decision between paying rent and getting professional experience or eating and building their resume. Again, this ensures every learner has the opportunity. These are professional projects. So again, we're not talking walk the dog or fetch coffee or make photocopies. These are the types of tasks that you would give to a new hire or a summer intern. We need someone to research and write an article. There was a project just kicked off tied to a competitive analysis. Again, the types of projects that people have on their plate, but also provide insights into skills. And we'll talk more about that when we get onto the assessment side. They can be done year round. So these don't just take place over the summer. They can take place right now. And that's the beauty of this. 
It can take place year round as needed. And then just to define college uh, career launcher, the way we think about it, both in general and as it relates to this program, these are college students or recent graduates, individuals who are launching their careers, individuals who are hungry to demonstrate their skills and build their resumes. One other thing to note, this does not replace summer internships, does not replace full-time hires. As one of the college students described it to me, and it was less creepy when she said it versus an old married guy like me, is think about the micro internship like going on a date, where the summer internship is getting engaged, the full-time role is getting, is getting hired. And that's important, especially for companies that may not have the brand recognition of a sales force or an Eli Lilly. The college students who have their hearts set on a certain company or industry may not be ready to get engaged or married to an organization that's outside what they think they want to do. But again, remember, these are college students. They don't really know. So if we're talking about just going on a date for that company that may not have as well known of a brand or may be looking to fill roles outside of what their company is known for, this provides an incredible way to engage and assess. And that's important because the entire program is built upon what students actually want. This addresses their goals in a way that aligns to yours. 75% of college students said they want to begin exploring career paths when they're freshmen or sophomores. But most of the recruiting efforts are focused on individuals who are seniors or maybe juniors. 71% say the traditional recruiting process doesn't let them demonstrate their skills. And we hear the same thing from employers that we've all made hires who interview well and have great resumes, but when they start, you realize it's not the right fit. The last thing that's important is 95% of students say this is how they wanna be recruited. This is how they wanna explore career paths. This is how they wanna determine what is the right fit, these real projects. Now, what's also important to know is that while students like this process, it also is providing real value to you. Now, for those of you who are involved in HR, I think we've all heard the term skills-based hiring. This approach puts skills-based hiring in practice and easy. The entire process gives you insights into the skills beyond what you could find from a resume or an interview or a transcript or a job posting. And it does it not with requiring additional work, but it's built right into the process. The process itself is an assessment. What students do before they even apply? Are they demonstrating problem solving, communication, attention to detail? When they're working on the project, you're getting insights into their skills along the way. Again, how are their communication? What is um, their, their intellectual curiosity? Again, as much as we may try to get these things from behavioral interviews and the like, you don't really know until you see. And again, what's really important is for the recruiting teams, the entire process start to finish takes less time than even doing a single phone screen. Now, while the projects certainly provide value to the busy professional who's getting that on-demand help, it's also easy to use anywhere in that recruiting process. So let's return to the recruiting funnel. So from an access perspective, the way this program is designed allows you to reach students from every Indiana school. Now, there's obvious benefits for those organizations that aren't able to visit all of the campus. But to be clear, it doesn't replace those relationships that you already have, but it complements it. So for companies like Eli Lilly, it's a great way to access the finance student who wants to do M&A, but may not be thinking about Eli Lilly. They think they have to go work at an investment bank in New York or Chicago. But for a company like TMS International up in North, uh, Northwest Indiana, they may not have the brand recognition. This becomes a great way to access those students who may not visit their career fair booth or don't attend a college it's recruiting at. Now, what's important also is it's not about schools forcing students to participate. Their students just click, click, clicking uh, to submit a resume. Students are actually have some skin in the game. The students are proactively raising their hand and saying, I want to learn about your organization. And this creates an incredible pipeline. Again, accessing the students, being able to see those candidates. It's not just about access. It's also about engaging the students, being able to target specific student populations based upon your goals. 
Again, one of the areas that was most interesting to me when I launched Parker Dewey was the importance of geography, the importance of the student who's from Columbus, Indiana, who wants to return home. They obviously know about Cummins. They see the factory. They, they know the brand. But they may not realize that Cummins has opportunities in technology or marketing. This program lets an organization like Cummins be very intentional in targeting those students. Or what about those first and second year students who may visit your career fair booth when you're on campus, but you don't have internships until they're juniors or seniors? This provides a way to engage those students and keep them warm. And you can also start target other students, again, based upon skills, based upon graduation date. Now, getting the students engaged is one thing, but we all know how difficult it is to assess the skills and determine who's the next great hire. As I was alluding to before, the entire process serves as an audition. Think about the amount of time we spend flipping through resumes, doing phone screens, and trying to figure out who's the right fit. This process gives you those insights with less time. It lets you see feedback on how students actually do so you can focus on the high potential candidates. It also lets them learn about your organization so they can make the right decision. As I alluded to before, 55% of recent hires leave their first job within the first year. Sometimes it's because the organization determines it's not the right fit, but sometimes it's because the student. This process helps tease those things out earlier. And again, it's not adding to the workload. You're leveraging the insights that are already provided through the process. Once you actually determine who's the right fit, how do you ensure they're actually converting and starting? As I mentioned, the mutual assessment that's embedded into the process allows both you and the candidates to determine if it's the right fit. It also allows the candidates to build relationships with actual hiring managers beyond those relationships that are formed in the traditional recruiting process. We know this drives conversion. We've heard it from students. They feel more connected. We know it's a great way to keep them warm. It's not about more emails or t-shirts or taking them out to fancy dinners. Giving them these real experiences builds that relationship that leads to the convert. It leads to the start. And while I wish we didn't have to talk about renegs and ghosting, it remains a real issue. This process also creates, in, for lack of a better term, an insurance policy, a pool of engaged candidates who want to work at your company that you can pull from if you have last minute needs. And again, the beauty is it supports organizations at any stage of the process with the real data to support it. And I don't expect everyone to be able to read this, so I'm not going to go through in detail, but these projects provide a massive amount of data whether it's around geographic ties, whether it's around performance on core skills like quality, communication, timeliness, insights about graduation day, their major, you get this all and it's all automatic. So let's show you how this program works. Well, it's designed to be really, really easy. Internally, it's called Jeff Proof. It needs to be simple enough that I would use it. Essentially, it's three steps, post your project, pick who you want, and the work gets done. And as opposed to showing you screenshots, let's show you how it works. So here's a portal and we'll share the link at the end of the presentation that you can come into. Let's say you're a busy professional and you need help writing an article, or you're a recruiting professional. You're trying to find candidates for an entry-level marketing role. Well, let's test drive them. Let's have them write an article on a certain topic. You can simply click a button. Here's a project pre-scope content creation. We want you to research and draft an article on a specific topic. You can edit this description. You can change it. You might say instead of on a specific topic, we want you to write an article on the benefits of industry in Indiana. Great, really simple. You can edit, you can tweak, you put in the location of your company. You can ignore all of this. Through the generous support of the IEDC, they're covering this cost, and we'll talk more about the nuance of it. But you can ignore it. Don't change it. If there's any specific skills you have, you can add them. So I'm looking for someone who can code in Python, or I need someone who's an expert in 
Salesforce. No problem. Automatically, this is going to be seen by every student across any of Indiana's colleges and universities. It's automatic. There is nothing you need to do. Now, if you have a preference for current students versus recent graduates, you can certainly highlight that, but no need to. And then you can ask whatever questions you want. Really, really simple. Even with me talking, what did that take? A minute, maybe two? Once the projects are posted, the students see the description, the start date, the due date, and then you're able to see the candidates. You can click through and see details. So you can see that Ethan, who goes to Notre Dame, yeah, you can see his resume and his work experience, but you can see from the short answer question, is he really taking this seriously? Does he have deep interest in our organization? Again, not saying this to pick on Ethan, but just to show it as an example. In contrast, you can see someone like Rebecca. Rebecca talks about why she enjoys writing and editing. She talked about her prior work with the human resource department, but you'll also notice she has a typo here. That's a signal. Again, these answers themselves give you a ton of insights and it takes less time and less data to understand. I should be selected. I did a summer internship with a certain company and work closely with, great, let's select that student. Really, really, really easy. And again, even with my talking, it took only a couple of minutes. Whoops. Once the student is selected, excuse me, the work gets done. Typically, we suggest having a 5, 10, 15 minute kickoff call between the student and whoever's managing it. I like to do this just to answer any questions and set any expectations like, I'd like you to submit this as a PowerPoint document or why don't you send me a draft next week? Students are able to use the resources they have, whether it's resources available through their universities, like alumni, office hours, et cetera. Students are also inherently motivated to do a great job. Again, we see this when they're applying for the projects through short answers, but we've also seen over the past 10 years, 98% plus success rate. Again, students are motivated. Yes, they're being paid, but they're not doing it for the money. They're doing it because they wanna prove themselves. Maybe they wanna work at your company upon completion, or maybe they just want you as a rep. Those are all good things. You're getting high quality work product, but also able to access and get insights into candidates for full-time roles or summer internships to the extent you have them. And then Parker Dewey, again, behind the scenes is providing all the support. And one thing to note, and I sort of glossed over this, when you're selecting micro interns, they are not your employees. They are not your contractors or interns or apprentices or anything else. They're actually employees or contractors of Parker Dewey. They're on our books. We handle all the payroll. We handle all of the accounting. We handle all of the 1099s and the like. As the general counsel of a large financial services institution said, from your perspective, it's the same as if you go to Kinko's. Now, granted, they're not making photocopies, but the point is it makes it really, really easy from an HR and legal perspective. Again, we're providing that ongoing support. We want this to be easy. It's also important to know that if you work with a micro intern, whether it's through this program or in general, and you decide you want to hire him or her for a summer internship, full-time role or anything else, there's no temp to perm, there's no conversion, we're not a staffing firm. We want this to turn into a full-time hire if it's the right fit. So as Tony alluded to before, the goals of this program are really threefold. We wanna bring awareness of the breadth of opportunities in Indiana to the amazing college students across Indiana's colleges and universities. The student like me, who's from New Jersey, who went to school in Indiana, how do we keep that student in state? Or the student who's from Indianapolis and wants to do technology, how do we make sure they don't leave Indiana upon graduating and go to the West Coast or East Coast? Again, we wanna bring the awareness because Indiana has so many amazing opportunities. And that's also to support the Indiana company's hiring needs. Again, making sure we continue to have that great pool of highly motivated talent 
pool with the Midwest sort of work ethic, if you will, and the skills that are honed during their college experience. A couple of other housekeeping things to note. Again, eligibility criteria for students. These are current students or recent grads of any Indiana college or university. They need to be at least 18 years of age and they have work authorization. From an employer perspective, and again, I use the term employer loosely because they're not actually your employees. It's open to anyone, whether you're a for-profit, non-profit, small business, large company, you have access. You need to have a location in Indiana. You don't need to be headquartered there, but you need to have a location and, need, and the project needs to be tied to that location. And ideally you're looking to hire individuals for full-time roles. Again, you don't need to be like the Accentures of the Deloitte's where they have classes of thousands of students, but you have this desire to hire entry-level talent for full-time roles that you may have. So again, how does this help you? It helps you target and engage candidates. It helps you keep them warm. The students that you're meeting at career fairs or other events, it helps you gain insights into the skills, drive conversion. It's also important to know that one of the things both Tony and I like about this is it's an opportunity to give back in a high impact, low lift way. So if you were an Indiana grad like me, or you went to Ball State, maybe your organization recruits at those schools, maybe they don't. But if I'm a Ball State grad, what a great opportunity to work with a Ball State student on a project and give them a real experience and do so in a way that's also helping my organization. And a lot of this is at the project level. One of the things I wanna highlight is for those companies that do have those larger recruiting needs. Again, doesn't need to be thousands, but maybe you hire five, 10, 20 individuals out of college every year. We're happy to work with you and show you other ways you can use this more programmatic. Whether you're trying to fill a class of sales professionals like Smith and Nephew, again, a company that has a large Indiana presence was, this becomes a great way to engage the mechanical engineering students who weren't thinking about sales, but also to get insights onto their skills. Whether you're trying to build early ID programs, whether you're recruiting for specific types of talent, all we need to do is understand the goals and we're happy to build programs around you. And again, I'll share a few examples of ways companies are doing this. Happy to talk more offline about any or all of these. Again, campus ambassador programs. For those organizations that do have an on-campus presence or are looking to build new ones, these micro internships become a great way of building those campus ambassador programs to engage students beyond sort of the usual and also to build that brand on campus for those students who may not be aware. Using it as a job audition. Again, the Smith nephew example I was giving. They use this to engage mechanical engineering students who realize they may not want to be in the laboratory but weren't thinking about roles in business development with a medical device company. They use the micro internships to see the insights and to mutually assess. And then early ID programs. That is so top of mind for so many employers, including Tony's former, uh, former folks at GE. How do we start to build those relationships with first and second year students earlier in the process? And as I said, the impact's real whether it's around brand building, early access, selecting the right candidates, targeting specific geographies, diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, this fits right in. So to get started, it's really simple. We'll share the link in the chat, or you can use the QR code. And from the screen I showed you before, any of these projects, you can simply click on them or create your own. There's also a form if you wanna contact us if you have specific questions. But again, through the generous support of the IEDC, they're covering the cost of the first project for every organization um, and happy to talk more about other opportunities. Tony, is there anything I missed? Great job, Jeffrey. Um, you know, maybe what I would, I would say you did an amazing job. I wanna kind of go back to, you know, awareness, awareness, awareness. You know, when I was in college, you know, it was back in the day before all the technology was here today. And, it, and we didn't know about, I didn't know about all the companies in the state of Indiana, uh, whether they're small, medium, or large. Uh, I wasn't, uh, you know, when I was with GE, uh, I wasn't going to, or we weren't going to all 36 higher ed institutions in the state of Indiana. 
Uh, but and, and with that said, I know we missed great talent in you know academic institutions that we didn't go to. For this program, you know, there's been a, a couple questions on you know who's going to fund this, and Jeffrey's pointed that out. You know, think think of this as you know one going back to what I said. Um, you know, we've overheard the the phrase "it's a war for talent," but it's even more of a war for talent. We um, are competing with every other state. Uh, the amount of students that are coming to Indiana, you know, we rank what ninth or tenth on attraction of college students, uh, but I think we're thirty sixth on retaining. And this program is partially meant to bring that awareness again of your company and your great career opportunities. These students that they don't know about to the university and college students in the state of Indiana. So with this program, think of it as, you know, the pilot program with the IDC, we're the kindling of the fire to get the fire going. We're trying to get this, the flywheel going. Um, and ultimately you, this is an opportunity for you to get your brand out there. And it's an opportunity, I would say, not only to get a project posted, but if you have two or three functional areas that, um, are important to your corporation or company uh, that you're recruiting for, you know, making, making, bringing awareness of those projects brings awareness of the careers that you have and not only brings awareness to the students, but the universities are also going to see this. So, you know, like Jeffrey said, you like at GE, we didn't have the opportunity to go to all the different, or we didn't go to all the different campuses in the state, but this gives you that ability uh, to get that exposure there. Um, so exposure to the institution, the students, the career centers. And then again, we've seen some questions here on uh, information, but this, and I know we'll say it on the end, at the end, but uh, there will be for those of you that registered uh, and are on the call and those, uh, you know, you'll get a follow-up email from Parker Dewey within the next day, if not sooner, with the recording and the presentation. And then from the state of Indiana, we had multiple channels that we also uh, share this information out. And then I know the universities and colleges throughout the state did also. So I'll, I'll pause there for now, Jeffrey. Yeah, no, thank you, Tony. And again, it, it's uh, I think you hit all the highlights um, and high points. A couple of things to note, something something that you said. I think the goal of the program is not to um, it, it's to be that kindling. I, I love that metaphor. So if you're an organization and you say, hey, I wanna try this with my HR department, but I think we could also use it in sales and marketing, or we could also use it in IT. The IEDC has, has given us flexibility to allow multiple projects for companies within reason. And again, Tony, I, I sort of don't wanna speak for you, but I think we, we all expect everyone to have the best intentions with this. We're not looking for organizations to go do 50 of these through the IDC, IEDC saying, wow, this is free. That's not the intent. But if you're saying, hey, this is really helpful for me, and I think my friend in another department, that would be wonderful. And, and again, we're happy to work with you, and the IEDC will cover, cover the cost. Is that a fair way of describing it, Tony? Yes, it is. And it's, it's not unlimited. So I, I would say, you know, I applaud everyone for being on the call today. So do your best. Uh, from a timing standpoint, to get your project up there. Uh, as Jeffrey mentioned earlier, we had a call with universities last week, and it was really two, you know, two things we really wanted to get out of that was one, bringing awareness of the program to the higher ed institutions that didn't have awareness, which many did, but also to, you know, ask them to get this information out to the students. So getting your project on the platform sooner than later uh, is going to be helpful for those students as they start creating their accounts on the platform. Uh, yeah, and, and actually you bring up another really interesting point. The timing is great. The timing is great. We are in September. It is, Tony, you know this better than anyone, the hot time, the busy season for campus recruiting. Career fairs, info sessions, all taking place now. For any of you that are involved in those things, for any of you that are visiting those campuses, this is perfect. This is a perfect compliment. You meet some amazing students when you're on campus at, um, at, at Butler. What a great opportunity to keep them warm and engage them. Or before you're going to the campus recruiting event at Purdue, what a great way to start to build relationships with those students. And if you have any of those use cases, always feel like you can reach out to us and we're happy to give you examples. 
I also want to answer a couple of the very specific questions that came up in the chat. Um, and again, my colleague Lindsay, I think, hit a lot of them. We got a question about a federal agency that requires certain background checks and, and security clearances, et cetera. Um, the micro internships are designed very specifically not to require those, even for organizations that do. And the example I'll give is Northrop Grumman. Every one of their employees goes through a background check. They have still been a massive user of the Parker Dewey micro internships. They found that the short term nature and the access to information the students were given, i.e. none, they were using public data, did not require background checks. Furthermore, since the student was not a Northrop employee, intern, or contractor, they also didn't require background checks. Again, back to that example of it's like going to Kinko's. If a Northrop employee goes to Kinko's to have copies made, they're not doing a background check on the individual. Now, again, they're still smart about it. Obviously, Northrop's not going with top secret materials. The same thing is true here. We also got a question about US citizenship. We are an open platform in that we allow any college student or, or recent grad who's studying in the US to participate. But the one piece of demographic information we share at an individual student level is if they're an international citizen or not, because we recognize a lot of organizations have limitations around that. So you'll be able to see that when you're seeing the candidates. You'll also be able to clarify when you're posting the micro internship if US citizenship is required. Let's see what else. We saw proprietary information. Can we have them sign an NDA? All of the students are under NDA on our platform, as is Parker Dewey. The NDA also has real teeth, i.e. kicked out of school, transcript pulled kind of real teeth. In almost a decade of doing this, knock on wood, happy to say we haven't had issues. Now, we also tell organizations to be smart about it. When we're doing projects for investment banks like BMO, they're not sharing social security numbers or names or account information about accounts, but they may share some gross data. Again, not at the individual, they're being smart about it. That said, you can certainly have the student sign your own NDA as well. The only thing we do not allow organizations to have students sign is non-competes. Beyond the legal questions about if they're applicable or not, the nature of the projects are such that it just doesn't make sense. And we wanna make sure we have the best interest of all of the stakeholders in mind. Let's see what other questions came up. Citizen. Um, after the first project cost is covered by the IEDC or companies build for additional ones. Yes, and, and um, Mandy, to your question, as Tony alluded to, it's the first one, but if you have a second or third for a different department, or di we're happy to work with you, the IEDC just doesn't want organizations taking advantage of it. They want this opportunity to be accessible for as many organizations and as many students as possible. But once that's done, yes, you are billed directly for each project. Um, you set the price, and that's important to know, you set the price for each project. You determine it. So while the projects for the IEDC, the price is set, and again, IEDC is covering it, for any subsequent projects, you set the price. It is fixed fee and you determine it. Tends to shake out at implying about 20 to $25 an hour, which is in line with the NACE average for summer interns and new hires. 90% of what you set the price for goes directly to the student. Parker Dewey retains 10% of each project, and that covers our cost of having the student on our books, issuing 1099s to the students, et cetera. And happy to talk more about that offline if you have other questions. And Jeffrey, I'll just I'll maybe add one point to that. Uh, when I was at GE, as we were getting ready to roll that out, I mean, one, one of the things we loved was the fact that we could use a P card to do this. Um, we didn't have to go through our purchase order process, which would have been timely uh, and cumbersome. So it made it really easy for us to uh, launch it within the company. Yeah. And, and again, just to show you an example, I need someone to do an email marketing campaign. Here you go. We have a recommended price on each of these projects. Again, we expect it to take 20 hours. 
we think a fair price for you to pay is 444, so the student gets 90%, which is 400. You might say, yeah, I think it's only gonna take 10 hours and I wanna pay, I want the student to get $225. No problem. Again, now, if you said, I want the student to make 20 bucks, not per hour, but in total, you'll notice you get this warning saying that doesn't feel like a fair price. Again, we want to be very transparent. One other thing to note, and again, one of the things that we see a lot of organizations do, so in the Smith nephew example I was given before, they were doing a project to assess candidates for full-time sales roles or sales internships. Instead of posting one micro internship, they said, I want 10 students to do this. I want to compare and contrast 10 different students to see the work. Not only am I engaging the 10 students, but I can see how does Tony do relative to Jeff, relative to Lindsay. You can, again, use it as an audition earlier in the process. And again, that's important to note. It's also important to note that beyond the 10 students who Smith Nephew selected in this example, they're also engaging 100, 200, 300 students who apply for the projects. Again, back to this example, while Katie was selected, all of these other students are now engaged. This organization has insights into those other students. Those other students have proactively raised their hand and expressed interest. So maybe this student isn't the right fit for this project, but in the future, maybe you have a data analytics or business analytics project. You now have Rishi engaged. You have those insights. Any other questions? Feedback? Tony? Hey, Jeff oh, go ahead. Please. I was going to say, Jeffrey, what, you know, I'm a company. I click on, you know, create an account. From the time I start to create my account as a company to, you know, going through and doing my first project, how long is it going to take me? I, I love that question. Um, creating an account and posting a project takes under five minutes. Again, what I was showing you is real. And it's under five minutes. It's five minutes, even if you're talking through it like I was. I think I still had it done in two minutes. You'll have students applying. We typically say give it 24 to 48 hours. Because again, some students get in a rhythm. Every day at lunchtime, I'm going to check. Or every day, or, or maybe I'm checking every other day. So students get in a rhythm. We always say give it 24, 48 hours in general. If you have very, very specific projects with very specific needs and very specific skills, you may want to give it a couple more days. But again, we're talking days, not weeks. So we had a project posted by a large manufacturing company where they needed someone who knew Power BI could code in Python, and by the way, how they be a fluent Portuguese speaker. I wish I could make this up, literally. And, and I saw the project posted, and I was a little nervous. Are we really, like, are we going to have the candidates? I think two days later, he had 15 candidates, of which, in his words, not mine, 12 or 13 of them could have been amazing. Again, what's great about this is by giving students what they actually want, they're engaging. They're not being forced to. In fact, we don't allow colleges or universities to require it or force it. They can encourage, they can suggest, but they're not allowed to require it, which means that the students, when they're imply, applying, are there because they want to be. So again, sorry for the long-winded answer, 24 to 48 hours. Some companies leave projects up longer, though. So Smith Nephew, back to that example, when they're building a pool of candidates for a sales role and wanted a really big net, they left the project up for a week and had hundreds of candidates. That was their goal. And again, we're happy to work with you. Hey, hey Jeffrey, maybe I'll, just a couple things. You know, the Parker Dewey platform is not new to Indiana universities and colleges. It's not new to students going to school in the state of Indiana. Uh, with this rollout last week, and even you know, as we continue working with our universities and colleges, the amount of students on the platform will grow. But just maybe just to hit a couple things again, you know, this is open to all companies that have a presence in the state of Indiana. Uh, you may be a company that's not headquartered in Indiana, but you've got a facility in Indiana, that's okay. 
uh, again, it's open to every higher ed institutions, higher ed institution in the state, and all those students going to those higher ed institutions in the state of Indiana. It is not open to uh, students going to another college uh, in another state. You know, there may be one of the questions that came up. What about that student that is from? Hammond, Indiana, that's going to the University of Illinois. You know, as much as we would like to open it up, that's going to be tough to one market to them and track to them uh, to get it there. But, you know, we've got to start somewhere. Again, this is a pilot program. We're getting this off the ground. You know, as Jeffrey said, you know, we don't want a company to, you know, request 50 micro internships because that will take away from other companies. And the goal is we want to get your company Indiana companies exposed to all of these college students that are going to school in the state of Indiana. It's a great win-win. It's a great win-win. And again, if your organization is one where you are going to use Tony's example, you want to reach students who are from Hammond who go to school elsewhere, let us know. Again, it's not part of this program. What I love about this program is it's a perfect overlap of the Indiana colleges Indiana companies and the Indiana um, state collaborating to support. If you have needs beyond that, happy to talk with you and happy to show ways you can use it. Um, and that's the goal. I, again, to be very direct, as Tony and I have talked about, the goal is not for the IEDC to have to fund this forever. The goal is for your organization, whether you're a small company or a large one, to say, gosh, this is a great way for us to find great talent. It's a great way for us to recruit. It's a great way to get help on small projects that we also may have along the way. We see the value. Two, three, $400 project to get help on some, like that's valuable. That's valuable. If it leads to a great hire, that's valuable. And that's the goal. To the question that came up, how long is the pilot program? It's until funding runs out. Um, and again, back to Tony's point, um, it's first come, first serve. If you have um, the interest, I would strongly, strongly, strongly suggest posting um, because we don't know how long the program is going to last. I also want to reiterate something Tony said. This is not some newfangled thing. So this program is insanely innovative, and I give Tony all of the credit for spearheading it but it's built upon the successes of other programs we've seen. It's leveraging the best practices of programs. I think I saw Tim Peterson in the chat talking about something he did in collaboration with the Strata Foundation in Kansas. It's built about programs um, that were done by certain schools, helping engage alumni. Tony's taken all of those best practices and really applied them to this initiative in a way that creates that win-win. We got a question, are organizations allowed to hire one student for the micro internship and also engage others for interviews? Yes, Kevin, that's, that's again, part of the benefit of this. It's in everyone's best interest when that happens. Now, what's different about this is unlike the traditional recruiting model where you may pay X tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars to get lists of names of students and blast them emails saying we're interested, et cetera, et cetera. And students wind up blocking emails as Tony and I both know. In this case, the students are seeing your project and they are proactively raising their hand and saying, I'm interested. So now when you reach out to them for an interview or other discussion or a future role, these are individuals that have already expressed interest. And part of the reason it works, and, and sorry to, to sort of reiterate this, is because you're giving them what they want. Northrop Grumman, just to pick on that, students think about Northrop Grumman and they think it's only applicable if I wanna build aircraft or I'm interested in the military. But then they see a project like, we need help analyzing data tied to the behavior of sea turtles. It was a real project they posted. Say, oh, I didn't realize Northrop Grumman did things with sea turtles. Eli Lilly posting a project tied to m and I didn't realize Eli Lilly did m and These projects incite them. They give them more interest than come to our career fair booth, we're giving out t-shirts, or come to our info session, we have pizza. This is what students want. So 
So one total micro internships. So, so Christy, the first one is covered for a department. If you have other departments or offices that also want to do one or two, it's not a problem. Um, and then any additional ones, you set the price and then you are only invoiced once you select a student. So again, if you uh, if you post a project and don't see any students you want, you hit cancel and, and you're not invoiced. Again, we want this to be fair. And as I keep on going back to, Jeff proof. It needs to be easy enough that I would use it. And as Tony said, the average project is about three or $400. It's something that's a small enough price that as a big company, you can put it on your P card, especially since they're not your employees, they're not your contractors, there's no legal sort of ties. And as a smaller company, it's not going to break your budget. You're not committing to X number of months of someone or X number of years. Thank you, Christy. Marissa or Marisa, I, I agree with you. Students can see the real work performed and get a chance to be part of an interesting project. And again, that's key. They're seeing the real work when they're seeing the description. So a company they may not have heard of or thought of, and they see a project that looks enticing, great. Or they see a role they may not be thinking about, the psychology student that may not realize the breadth of great roles in HR, or the mechanical engineering student that, or biology student that doesn't know of a such thing as a sales engineer, and then they see a project that piques their interest. It could also be the opposite. Again, I remember early on, we had a company that worked with a student on the micro internship, wanted to make a full-time offer, and the student said no. And I apologized to the company. I'm like, so sorry the student didn't. I'm like, no, I'm happy the student realized we weren't the right fit before we invested in bringing him or her on board. That's a good outcome for companies that have summer internships. Think about how much money we spend on summer intern programs. And they're great and they're wonderful, but maybe 30% of them, 40%, 20%, Tony, I don't know what the metrics were, GE, I'm not going to ask you. Think some percentage of them, we realize it's not the right fit. Wouldn't it be better if we could figure that out beforehand? I am out of questions, I think, in comments. Yeah. Hey, Jeffrey, you know, I'll call out maybe one thing. Um, I think we've mentioned it, but this micro internship can happen right now. It can happen during the spring semester, the fall semester. It can happen when the student's interning at another company during the summer. Uh, I go back to my days uh, when I was with GE and, you know, you know, when you, when I look at the university and college space and the recruiting, you know, we were all the recruiters, it was kind of like a, it was a, it was a family, right? And my buddy uh, at General Motors, if if there was a student that we were both uh, recruiting, the student was interested in both of our companies. Sometimes we won, sometimes we didn't. But if I would have had this tool back then, it would have been one way where I would have leveraged it to get that individual to get that student to do a project, do a micro internship project while they were working for. Uh, you know, Bill's company, uh, or, you know, if a student came to had an internship with GE, you know, as a rising junior, and they decided they wanted to go uh, try a different company as a rising senior, we would, that's another strategy I would use or employ to get, stay in front of that student when they were somewhere else. So, it, it, you know, your strategy for your company is your strategy for your company. Uh, the strategy for is is going to be different company to company, uh, but but this is a a great program that we're really wanting to you know I think it was ah, Susan you're on, um, but you know with small companies uh, really helping small and medium sized companies lift their brand uh, across all these academic institutions in the state of Indiana. So we at the IEDC couldn't be happier uh, to be launching this pilot program in the state of Indiana. And uh, as Jeffrey and his team know, and some of you on the phone on this webinar know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very competitive and I want the state of Indiana to win. I want all Hoosier companies to win. So uh, we want we want a win win uh, for you. And that's that's really you're the customer to me. So don't hesitate to reach out uh, to me, but to the Parker Dewey team on the program. But super excited that you're able to join the, the webinar webinar today. So thank you very much. Yeah. And just again, real quickly, to build upon what you just said, and I'll let you close us out. 
Um, first of all, I had up a second ago uh, to your point about timing of year. The company I showed posted a project two days ago. They had plenty of applicants for it. And that was before the program even officially kicked off. There's another one that, again, just kicked off doing competitive research. Again, plenty of candidates can take place year round. And then in this deck, to Tony's point, we show some examples of specific use cases of how companies are used it. M. Holland, manufacturing or plastics company in Northbrook, Illinois, was using it to engage students from Illinois who attended school elsewhere. These were their metrics. That was their goal. Fleet Corps, which is now known as CorePay, used it for early ID. That was their goal. They wanted to build relationships with underclassmen and students who were studying fintech and AI and strategy. Orange Theory, again, their challenge was everyone heard of Orange Theory, but when they would be on campus, you would think it's for a role at one of their gyms. They were looking for corporate roles and they were using this to, again, engage the student who might not be thinking about roles in Orange Theory's corporate, but also use it to audition. And then Smith Nephew, as we talked about before, they used it as an audition, but the other thing they did, and they did this at Nesby, it was really interesting, they used it to drive interest in their booth. How do we get enough students to our booth at Nesby, which is highly competitive? And we don't, so again, this is where we're happy to work with you if you have specific goals that you're trying to accomplish. Tony, should I let you close us out? Sure. And I'll just maybe highlight one thing, Jeffrey, the, the Nesby example. Um, just that little nudge. I mean, you might have 10 students or, you know, you want to get that momentum built for uh, a career fair or a national diversity uh, convention or conference that's happening. But uh, another great way uh, to get in front of the student pre them showing up. Just a few things. Um, we're excited to launch this program in the state of Indiana. Um, please take the time to set up your account um, to think about the projects, you know, Parker Dewey is here to help. Um, the presentation has that information in it. Uh, it's got the email, uh, that if you've got questions, I know that the QR code, you can set up a meeting. Um, uh, and as Jeffrey walked through earlier, it doesn't take much time at all to create your account as a company. And then from a project standpoint to create that first project. But if you've got two or three areas, uh, you know, maybe it's technical, maybe it's analytics, maybe it's finance or HR, but sh taking the time to develop those projects or leveraging a template that Parker Dewey has already established to get your projects up there in different functional areas is just going to expose your company even more with all those great opportunities that you have. Um, and then again, time is of the essence. Uh, you know, it's not an endless uh, check account checking account that's out there. So the, the sooner that you get your projects up there, uh, the better for you. With that, uh, again, for all the Hoosier companies, all the Indiana companies, thanks for being in Indiana, uh, here to help you. Uh, happy to, uh, you know, if you've got other questions, I, I'm, I'm easy to find. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll throw it back to Jeffrey just to, to totally close this down. Oh, I was gonna let you have the last. Okay, one. all right, well, hey, Good luck all, to all the companies, uh, Jeffrey and team. Thank you for everything you're doing. And good luck to all the Indiana football teams this weekend. This is going to be the first time I use play it in the Rose Bowl in a long time. So I was trying to find a way to get out that way. Anyway, thank you all. Have a great rest of the week and uh, go Hoosiers, the state, not the school. Take yeah. care.